in elementary school, we learned multiplication tables. And I'm suggesting that now in high school, we should be learning exponent tables to help us learn exponents. So I made up this table in a spreadsheet. I'm just about to put the um, formula into the cells. I'll show you how to do this so you can make your own. So I'm going to put an equal sign here, and then choose the base, and then put that to the exponent, and choose the exponent. Then I'm going to change this to make it sticky to that column, column B, and I'm going to change the 3 and make it sticky. So it will stay at um, row 3. There's. Now we can copy that formula and paste it. Yeah. There we go. So there is all of the exponents. Now what you'll notice is anything one to any exponent is always equal to one. Zero or anything to the exponent of zero is always equal to 1. Anything to the exponent of 1 is always equal to itself. And then you'll see the, these are the row of squareds, the row of cubes, uh, uh, sorry, not rows, columns, columns of quartix and quintix. And then if you go the other way, you'll notice that anything to a negative exponent is less than 1. A lot of people make the mistake thinking that something to a negative exponent is a negative number, but it's less a number that's less than one. And they get as the exponent gets smaller, the answer is uh, is also smaller. So there, you can make yourself an exponent table, and um, as you see these, you'll, you'll see six, eight squared to sixty-four. And uh, you'll also notice that for cubed to 64, you'll see those things and start to notice power patterns. And uh, this will help you in your um, upper year math courses. If you if you have a table like this, it saves a lot of time than referring to a calculator and typing things in. Because you, as you use these numbers over and over, you'll begin to recognize them and things will go faster. Okay.